least number of colors which are required to color a graph is called the chromatic number of a given graph. If the chromatic number is 2 for example, then it is called 2 chromatic. If the chromatic number is 3 or 4, it is called 3 chromatic or 4 chromatic graph. The edges of the tree is called as the branches and the elements of the tree is called as the nodes. Depending upon the odd number and the even number, we are going to write it is an even chromatic and a odd chromatic. Hello dear students, welcome to this session of discrete mathematics class. I am Mr. Niranjan, Faculty, Department of Computer Science, Vidyashtam First Grade College, the Temple of Excellence. Now, today in this session, I am going to discuss regarding very, very important concept in graph theory, that is a coloring of graph and to write the colors, how to write the colors for the different graphs and also regarding their chromatic number. So, in this session, let us discuss regarding the coloring of graph. Now, let us come to the first concept the coloring of graph, then the chromatic number for that graph. Now, what is coloring of graph? Coloring of graph is nothing but painting, painting all the vertices of a graph with color such that no two adjacent vertices have the same color. So, coloring the points, coloring all the vertices, that is nothing but painting all the vertices in such a way that no two adjacent, no two adjacent vertices have the same colors. So, two adjacent vertices will have same, no two adjacent vertices will have the same color. So, for that we are going to give the different colors. That is called uh, the coloring of graph. So, in general, the coloring of graph is nothing but painting of all the vertices, giving different colors or painting all the vertices of a graph with color such that no two adjacent vertices have the same colors is called the coloring of a graph. Now, let us take, take an example. Here, these are different types of uh, graphs. Some graphs are closed and there are some graphs are not closed graph. Now, let us draw the color for this. Now, let us consider this graph first. So, here, so there are two vertices, one and two. So, we can give two different uh, colors for this. Now, let us represent, let us give the color for this as, let me give the red color for this. This is one color and this is, this vertex is connected by the second vertex V2. So, let us represent uh, this vertex V2, let me represent using this color. So, here there are two different colors for this. So, V1 is one color and V2 is another color. This is how we are going to paint. This, this painting is nothing but coloring of a graph. That means no two, no two adjacent vertices have the same color. So, we have to give different colors for a different vertex. That's it. This is called the coloring of a graph. Now, let us come to the next. Here, three vertices are there V1, V2 and V3. So, therefore, we are going to give three different colors for this. So, this is V1. Let us represent V1 by this color, the vertex and, and there is a connectivity V2. For V2, I am going to shade this with uh, this color and uh, since V3 is, V2 is connected to V3, let us uh, represent by another color, V3. So, this is how we are going to color. This is also called as the coloring of a graph. This is called the coloring of a graph. Now, let us come to this. So, this, this is a closed graph. So, we have three different colors. Since this is an example, this is not a closed graph. Now, let us represent this by, see here, this is V1, the vertex V1 by this color, V1, V2, V3 and V4, okay. Now, then this is connected V2, let us represent this V2 by red color and V2 and V4 are not connected, so therefore we can give the same color for V4 also. The vertex V2 and V4 are not connected, so we can represent V2 and V4 by the same color that is by red. And whereas V3 is connected with uh, V2 as well as uh, with V1. So, let us represent this by another color. That is, let me represent by the black color. So, 
this is how we are going to shade. So this is called the coloring. So here four vertices are there, but we have colored with the three colors, right? Now let us come to this. Now let us represent this as the vertex V1, V2, V3, V4 and V5. Now since V1 and V3 are not connected, we can give the same color. Let us represent this with green color. So V1 and V3 are not connected. So let me represent this by the same color. V1 and V3 will have the same color. Next, V5 and V4 are connected. So therefore, we can give the color for this as V5 is, let, it, let me represent this by this color, red color and further this is not connected. I will represent this by the same color. So V5 and V2 are not connected. So let us represent by the red color. Whereas V4 is connected with V5 and V3 and V1. So let me represent this with uh, the blue color. This is how we are going to color the graph. This is the coloring of graph. That's it. Okay. Hope you got an idea. Now listen. So that means painting all the vertices, painting all the vertices of a graph with uh, color such that no two adjacent vertices have the same color. Two adjacent vertices will have the same color is called the graph. So this is an example for a coloring a graph. So that is, let me represent here. This is how we are going to represent. So this is how we are going to represent the graph with the different color. See, no two adjacent vertices have the same colors, right? So this is how we are going to represent. This is called coloring of a graph. Now let us come to the next concept, chromatic number. What is this chromatic number? The, the least number of colors required for coloring a graph G is called the chromatic number. The least number of colors which are required to color a graph is called the chromatic number of a given graph. That is denoted as xi, xi of G. Xi of G is nothing but the representation of the chromatic number of a given graph. So the chromatic number means the least number of colors, the least number of colors required to color a graph, coloring a graph G is called the chromatic number and that is denoted as Xi G. Xi G is the representation of the chromatic number. So let us consider an example. This is, there are two vertices V1 and V2. V1 and V2 are given with the different colors. Here, the chromatic number for this G is equal to 2. The chromatic number of this, there are two different colors, V1 and V2 are different. Therefore, the chromatic number for this graph is 2. Now, let us come to this example number A. Let us come to B. In this graph B, this is, we have four vertices, V1, V2, V3 and V4. See here, this chromatic number of this graph is, see how many colors, 1, 2 and 3 colors. So this is the previous example. So here, this is not connected. These two are these vertices V2 and V4 are not connected. Therefore, we are going to give the same color and these are connected. Therefore, they will have the different colors. So here, so the chromatic number of this graph is 1, 2, and 3. The chromatic number is equal to 3. Similarly, this is the closed graph. So here, the chromatic number for this is here V1, V2, V3 and V4 are the vertices. What is the chromatic number? What is the minimum number we have used to color this? So 1 red, blue, black and blue. So 1, 2, 3, 4 colors we have taken. The chromatic number of this graph is 4, 4 chromatic number. So this is nothing but the chromatic number. The number of, the least number of colors required for coloring a graph is called as the chromatic number. Very important concept. The examination they may ask regarding the chromatic number of a graph, okay. So hope you got an idea, right. Now let us come to the next graph. The chromatic number of a graph G is denoted as Xi G. Xi G is a representation of the chromatic number of a graph. If Xi G is equal to K, then the graph is called K chromatic, 2 chromatic, 3 chromatic, 4 chromatic. So if the chromatic number is K, if the chromatic number is 2, for example, then it is called 2 chromatic. 
If the chromatic number is 3 or 4, it is called 3 chromatic or 4 chromatic graph. So, xi g is equal to k, the graph is called the k chromatic graph. The chromatic number of a null graph is 1. The chromatic number of a null graph, null graph is 1. Because in null graph, so this is an example for a null graph. This will have only one vertex. So, therefore, the chromatic number for this is 1. So, therefore, the chromatic number for the null graph is 1. So, xi g is equal to 1. The chromatic number is 1 for a null graph because it will have only one vertex. Okay, that is the chromatic number of a null graph is 1. The chromatic number of null graph is denoted as xi g is equal to 1. This is an example for a null graph. The chromatic number of a complete graph k of n vertices is n. So, if the number of uh, vertices, number of vertices are n, then the chromatic number k is also equal to n. So, the chromatic number of complete graph k of n vertices is n. If the number of vertices are n, then the chromatic graph of vertice, graph of k of n vertices is n. The graph is a circuit with n vertices, then it is 2 chromatic if n is an even number, if it is 3 chromatic means if n is an odd number. So, if a graph is a circuit, then with n vertices, it is a circuit with n vertices, if it is 2 chromatic, if n is an even number, if it is 3 chromatic means if n is an add, if it is 2, it is an even chromatic, if n is even then it is called 2 chromatic. If n is 3, then it is called an odd chromatic. Depending upon the odd number and the even number, we are going to write it is an even chromatic and a odd chromatic. Let us take an example. These are the two examples. Let us write the chromatic number whether and check whether it is an even or an odd graph. Okay. Now, let us come to the next example. Here, this is an example. That is, the chromatic number of a graph G is denoted as xi G. Xi g is equal to k is the graph is called k chromatic. The chromatic number of null graph is 1 and the chromatic number of a complete graph k of n vertices is n. If a graph is a circuit, if a graph is a circuit with n vertices, then it is called 2 chromatic if n is an even, if 3 chromatic if n is an odd. Now, this is an example. This is the previous example. So, here let us let us take a uh, year. Since there is a connectivity, we are going to represent this as R. There is no link. So, there is no, these two vertices are not connected. R and R are not connected. Again, this is also not connected. So, we are going to shade this or color with red. And similarly, B and B and B are not connected. So, we are going to represent it with the blue color. So, what is the number? What is the number of colors? Minimum number of colors we have taken here are two colors, two colors are taken. Therefore, this is an example for a two chromatic even, this is called a two chromatic. So, therefore, the chromatic number of this graph is two, this is a two chromatic, the chromatic number is equal to two. Now, let us come to the second example, here these two, what is, what is it? G and B are not connected, we are going to shade with uh, the same color, so the same color is given for this. Further, R and uh, B is also not, these two vertices, R and B are not connected. So, we can shade this with a different color. Let us uh, shade with this uh, red, R and uh, this B also, right, okay. Now, whereas there is these two vertices, R and B are again connected, let us shade this with uh, the different color. So, this is how we are going to color the different vertices V1, V2, V3, V4 and V5. Okay. Now, here see how many minimum number of colors we have used to shade this. So, the minimum number of colors 1, 2 and 3 colors are taken. Therefore, this is an example for a 3 chromatic graph. This is a 3 chromatic graph. So, therefore, the first one, this is an example for 2 chromatic and this is an example for a 3 chromatic graph. This is how we are going to write the chromatic number, okay. Now, let us take an example. So, in the examination, they may ask the example like this problem. This is an example. Write the chromatic number for the following graph. So, here just uh, shade, just give the same color for the vertex which are not connected. So, this R, vertex R is 
not connected to this vertex R. Okay, right. So we will, I will give the red color for this. Again, this R and this R is not connected to this vertex again or I will going to represent this as by red color. Okay. Now, this B is connected to R. I will represent, I will draw, I will shade using the color blue color for this. Similarly, and uh, this R is connected to B. I will going to represent this with B. And uh, the same, this is also represented with uh, shaded with the color B. This is, so how many number of minimum number of colors we have taken? One is red, another one is blue. So two colors are taken. Therefore, this is a two chromatic graph. So the chromatic number of this is two. It is an E1, right? So xi of G is equal to two. This is two chromatic E1 graph it is, right? Now, this is how we are going to write the chromatic number for the given graph. Now, let us come to an example. Let us take one more example. It remind the chromatic number of the graph. So here, so how many vertices are there? V1, V2, V3, V4, V5, V6, V7. Since seven vertices are there, that means odd vertices. So therefore, it is a three chromatic graph, right? See here, let us uh, represent this uh, V1, V6 and V3. V1, then V3 and uh, V6 by the same color because they are not connected. Similarly, V2, V7 and V4 are not uh, connected. So we are represented by the red color and this with uh, another color. So therefore, this is an example for a three chromatic graph. So the chromatic number for this graph is equal to three. The minimum number of colors we have taken is three. That's it. This is how we are going to draw the uh, we are going to write the chromatic number for the given graph by coloring the vertices. So, in general, to color the graph, if any two vertices are connected, then we are going to represent by the different colors. If they are not connected, then we are going to represent by the same color. That is, so the minimum number of colors which we are going to use to shade or to paint the given graph is nothing but the chromatic number. That's it. Now, let us come to the next concept, tree. What is a tree actually? So a connected acyclic graph is called as a tree. A connected acyclic graph is called as a tree. In other words, a graph with no cycles is called as a tree. A graph without cycles is called as a tree, right? And the edges of the tree is called as the branches. And the elements of the tree is called as the nodes. So the edges of the tree is called as the branches and the elements of the tree is called as the nodes. Okay. Now, a graph is made up of vertices and the edges connecting some pair of vertices is called as a tree. So it is connected with some pair of vertices. This is an example for a tree. Okay. A tree is a special type of a graph. A root, a root. A rooted tree, this is an example for a root. A rooted tree consists of a set of vertices of a distinguished vertex called the root and the edges connecting these vertices is a root. So a tree has no cycles. So a tree has no cycle. This is an example for a root. So this is how we are going to represent a root in a graph theory. So in general, a graph without cycles is called as a tree. That is a cyclic graph. Okay. That means a connected graph without cycles is called as a tree. This is an example for a tree as well as a root. Okay. That's regarding a small concept regarding a tree and a root. So in the examination, they may ask one, two more question. Define a tree. A graph is made up of vertices and edges connecting some pairs of vertex is called as a tree or you can also write a graph without cycles is called as a tree, right? So that is regarding a tree and the root. So that's all regarding our today's session. Let us meet with the different concept in the next session. Thank you. Thank you very much.